Hey guys, uh, since I've been on YouTube, you know, I read a lot of comments. I comment sometimes myself, and I see the same old thing over and over uh, from a Trinitarian argument. And, and I just want to talk about that for, for a moment here. One thing that that I, I must admit I just I can't comprehend for the life of me is when I try to present the Unitarian argument or I try to present that Jesus is actually a human Jesus and I, obviously that would deny the Trinity all right off the bat. So one thing I'm trying to comprehend for myself is why is it that whenever I read these comments, okay, whether I'm engaged in a comment myself or I'm just coming across a video reading the comments, a Trinitarian is always making these statements like, God is three persons, that is one God. Something of that effect. I'm sure anybody who's read enough comments, watching the videos, whatever, been dealing in these circles, knows what I'm talking about. And and you're demanding, that the, the Trinitarian will be demanding that a person believes that God is three persons that make the one God. But the thing they cannot do is show a scripture where someone says it. Okay? All they can do is just slap and cut and paste scriptures in the comment section. Or even if they're making a video. I don't know. Even making a video is the same thing. They're making a video to prove the truth. All they can do is put a verse down there and then tell you that that means God is three persons and one God. The reason why I have to tell you that is because the verse itself is not saying it. Nobody is teaching that God is three persons and one God. So my, my the first thing I just want to ask is, why are you demanding that I believe this statement? Why is, why is it that the Trinitarian is making this statement and demanding that it is believed or saying that this is what you must believe or this is what God is and it's the truth? Yet you can't find a single solitary soul in the Bible that's saying it. I mean, you can tie together all the scriptures you want. You can jump from one book to another book to another book to another book and try to prove this idea that God is three persons. You try to make this this super proof text, I guess you will, by combining all these things together and trying to say this is what it means. And even in doing that, it still doesn't say God is three persons and one God. So I think that should give you pause. I think that should concern you. It should concern you when you are proclaiming and demanding that someone believe something that is not written. Uh, that to me, that's very simple. So we go round and round and round all day long, but at the end of the day, the Bible doesn't say God is three persons that make the one God. So that's the first part. The other thing I see is uh, a lot of times if I'm engaged in a Trinitarian, I'm trying to uh, have the discussion about whether or not Trinity is true, Unitarianism is true, oneness, whatever. Uh, a lot of times Isaiah 4424 come up and usually it's me that's putting it up because to me it just cuts to the chase a lot of times. And I, I feel like a lot of times I can find out whether or not somebody honestly wants to deal with the text by just asking that. What is Isaiah 4424 saying? Uh, thus says Yahweh, uh, who made all things, who stretched out the heavens alone, who made the earth by myself. Um, alone and by myself. Okay, if you're alone, is anyone with you? See, that's a simple question. It's, it, there's, there's no fun and games or anything about it. If you're watching this video, are you alone right now watching this video? Or is someone with you watching this video? If someone is with you, can you say that you are alone watching the video? It's, it's very simple English, very simple grammar. All right, there's no games here. So if, if, if Yahweh says he created the heavens and earth alone and by himself, what does that mean? Okay, because if you say it means something other than an individual is alone and by himself, then you are now deviating from the very definition of alone and by himself. And so I'll bring the scripture up, and then sure enough, I'll get that Yahweh, uh, I, I guess I've seen it three or four times, but I'll, I'll get that Yahweh is a name 
that all three members of the Trinity share. Okay? So that means that Yahweh is not Yahweh alone. That means that Yahweh, is, there's actually three Yahwehs. Now, there's not one person who alone is named Yahweh. Okay? It's, it's not. It's three people. So there is no alone. Alone is done with. Okay? And then you have, uh, I'll read off a quick verse to you. You have uh, Nehemiah 9.6. Uh, you are Yahweh, you alone. You have made heaven, the heavens of heaven, uh, and all their hosts, etc., etc. But the first part of that passage, you feel free to go read it. But the first part of that passage, you are Yahweh, you alone. What does that mean? I ask you a question. If if I tell you, okay, if I'm trying to convey the thought that I am a three-person God, okay, or I, let's just say that I'm not even God. I, I'm just a person that thinks that I am three people, okay? And I say to you, I am sir. I am, I alone am sir. From that statement, are you going to get, oh, sir is three persons? No, you, there's no way to do that. Well, unless you want to, I guess. But then you're reading into scripture. You're not letting it say what it's saying. And it's just like I said, if you tell someone you are who you are, whatever your name is, you are Billy, you alone. Okay. Is that something that's smart to say? If you're trying to convince the other person that you're three distinct and separate persons? Again, no, That the answer is not emphatically no. So why is it the rules change when we read the Bible? That's how it applies to you. That's how it applies to me. That's how it applies to anything. But when we read the Bible, that's all changed because why we want to support our Trinitarian doctrine. But you're just not being honest about the text because you don't like what it says. And, which I don't understand why not because it's not that big a deal. Yahweh is the only God. It's no big, it, it is what it is. So... How can you say that Yahweh is a name that is shared by all three when Nehemiah just absolutely disagrees with you? Blatantly. So you can't just make up these things on the fly. Just let it be what it is, okay? Like, God is the only true God. God sent Jesus. Jesus is human in origin. Jesus is the Messiah. He's the king. He's, he's the firstborn from the dead. He's the first to be resurrected from the dead. He's preeminent because of that. All right. All power and authority was given to him, which Jesus himself said. Why is that a problem? Billy, I, I, you know, I'm just, I'm curious. Why is that a problem? Because that's what it's saying. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Blatantly, I, I think there's four times in Scripture where that statement, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ has said that is a dumb thing to say if Paul's a Trinitarian who said it if Peter's a Trinitarian who said it that is a very dumb thing to say All right, if they're Trinitarians and they're trying to teach people Trinitarianism that is not something you would say I mean if you're a Trinitarian watching this video think about the last time you tried to explain to somebody who God is Okay, I want you to think back to the last time you explained that what did you say? Did you say Jesus has a God and a Father? Did you say any of the stuff that they're saying in the Bible? Or did you say, well, God is three persons that make the one God? See, that, that's a stupid thing to say. What Paul is saying, it's just, it's just dumb. If these guys are Trinitarians, they are the worst Trinitarians in the history of Trinitarianism. So just consider that, okay? Uh, that's, that's about all I'm going to say. Uh, you know, thank you guys for watching. See you next time. Shalom.